Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee. It's July 4th, happy Independence Day to my friends down south and happy birthday to my two little girls. My girls are uh, 12 years old and it's their birthday today. I'll see you in a little bit, sweeties. Um, so July 4th, it's 30 degrees Celsius here, which is about 86, 87 Fahrenheit. It is an absolute scorcher. And I'm just out here to have a quick look into one of my hives. So I'm gonna basically do a tutorial for a simple hive inspection. And the reason why I'm doing that is I've been sidelined for quite a while. Um, I had three retina surgeries in my right eye and then a couple of weeks ago my left eye detached as well. Not as bad though and I didn't have to have, to have a procedure on that. But because of that I'm way behind with the bees. I just put a few uh, honey supers on them but I don't know if they've swarmed or not. They seem to be doing well. I've got four hives down there. And uh, what I want to do now is just start to plan for splitting. So uh, I want to take a look at just one of my uh, two brood box hives to see how they're doing and to see if the if they have swarmed or not and uh, just start to plan out a split maybe in the next couple of weeks. So that's it. Thanks for joining me at 4D Honeybee. Okay, so what we're going to do today is just a simple inspection of this two deep hive body box. So I've got a queen excluder in there. So I'll, the box on top is just for pure honey production. The box on the bottom is for rearing brood. So I just want to make sure that there are a good number of bees in there, that it is queen right and laying. I don't really care about the honey production now. Again, I just put the box up there in the hopes that that might prevent them swarming because I haven't been able to do much management work on them. So what I suggest you do whenever you go out to inspect your bees is have a plan. Have a reason for you to be doing this inspection. All right. Now, what I see and what, what can be a bit of a common situation in years two and three when you start getting confident with your bees and you start getting more hives is you may tend to overmanage them, all right? Um, I don't suggest you go into your hives any more than maybe one time a week tops. There are some times when you need to go in more often that, than that if you're requeening or if there's an issue that you're trying to deal with, you might have to go every couple of days or a couple of times a week. But other than that, I think bees need to be left alone. And this is why. People say that bees can recognize uh, your body shapes and your face and that type of thing. If that's true, then what they're recognizing you as is the person that comes in once a week or every couple of days and completely ruins their day, right? You're taking this nice, cozy, smooth working hive and you're cracking it open to daylight. You're squishing bees, you're moving frames around, you're probably taking their honey too. So um, because of that, don't think you're doing a, the bees a favor when you're going into the hive, okay? That's the way I look at it anyway. Um, and always have a plan, have a reason for why you're going into this hive. So I'm going into this hive to check the bottom box to see if the bees have swarmed and to see if the queen is right, okay? To see if there is still a laying queen. I'm also seeing if they're doing well enough if there's a good enough number of bees in there to plan a split in the next couple of weeks. So that's my plan and uh, I won't do much more than that. Once I've satisfied those requirements, I'll put the box back together and leave the bees alone, okay? I suggest you do the same. Not so much quick in and out as far as inspections go, but just have a plan. Plans don't always work out, especially with bees, right? Especially with nature in general. They have their own set of rules, which I have no idea about. But uh, have your plan. Plan your flight, fly your plan. That's what us pilots always say. All right, so first things first, get your smoker going. Now, I, I strongly suggest that no matter how brief your visit's gonna be, you light your smoker. And the reason why is because you might think you're gonna do a quick visit, but it might turn into something more lengthy. You might have bees that are very well behaved, but today they're not. You might make a mistake and drop a bunch of uh, frames and anger the bees. Anyway, always light your smoker. Again, once you get into your second and third year, you start getting a little cocky maybe and you think you don't need it and that's always when you do need it. So this is what I do. I always start with, uh, you know, the easiest form of kindling I have is this piece of newspaper, which I always have kicking around. And although it's overkill, this is what I use to light it, an acetylene torch. I always used to have matches and lighters and that kind of stuff kicking around my bee box, but invariably I would always lose them. So I'm not doing any more brazing of, of uh, copper pipes or a soldering of copper pipes because I use PEX now. So this thing probably is going to last me another 10 or 15 years. So that's why I use this. Might be, it may be overkill, but it sure is easy. Check it out. That's it. She's lit. Drop it in. And even though the newspaper is lit, you got to make sure that it's going pretty well. And I usually go until I see or 
are here, you can hear them. Flames coming up to the top. All right, so that's going pretty well. You can have a look in there. And then the main fuel that I use is this, wood chips. The reason why I use wood chips is because this is what I used over the winter to insulate my top box. So I've always got a ton of it kicking around. It ignites really, really easily and burns into a really thick, thick, dark white smoke, okay? Look at that. And it takes nothing to get it going. But you do have to make sure that it is going and you jam it in there, right? And again, seeing that I don't think I'm gonna be in this box for more than let's say 15 minutes, but I'm still gonna fill it up. I'm gonna fill it up just in case, because you never know. So that should be more than good enough. That's pretty much three quarters full. I'm gonna make sure that there's a consistent thick white smoke coming out. And what you find with this, with wood chips at least, is that the smoke is very cool, all right? Particularly with you jamming a lot of wood chips in there until it burns right through to the top, the stuff that's coming out of the top is nice and cool. You see? Get this on. And you can see the kind of smoke that comes out. And you might have to just give it a few goes to make sure it's really well lit, but you can actually even smell the wood chips burning as opposed to the newspaper. So there, light your smoker. A couple more quick comments about your smoker. Um, make sure you don't leave your smoker Make sure you don't set it down any place that's flammable, so even grass, because there have been cases where beekeepers have, you know, set their smoker down, not realize that they've actually ignited a fire, they finish tending the bees, walk away, and then they burn down their bee yard. So I've always got, you know, extra pieces of patio stone kicking around, and that's what I use, or pressure treated lumber works well as well. Don't set your heat, your hot, smoker on on your plastic bottom board that's what I did that doesn't work so well so let's get this hive open first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this outer telescoping lid and I'm gonna set it upside down in the grass here because I'm gonna use that to set everything else on top of and that way the hives themselves the innards of the hives are not touching things like the grass or the ground so you see there's a good amount of bees here. If you didn't have a queen excluder here, you would check the upper lid for the queen just to make sure she's not on there, right? So here's where you look again. You're not going to see her here because of the queen excluder. But that's the first thing you do. I mean, this is a good sign that the bees are up there making honey, but that's not what my inspection's for. So all I'm going to do is remove this box I'm going to remove this box hoping that it's not too heavy with honey because I'm really not supposed to be doing much heavy lifting. Now my plan here is to lift this box and have the queen excluder stay on the bottom box. Again, that may or may not happen, really won't matter, but I just have to be aware of where it is. So again, that box goes on top of your outer lid, your telescoping lid. And now, I'm just looking for the queen here. I don't see her, so we'll get the queen excluder off. And the bees seem very calm right now, so... I'll try and stay calm as well and... hope that, uh... we each treat each other well. Okay, so queen excluder goes off. So, I'm gonna start with um, I'm gonna start with an outside frame or two. I use this thing to hold the frames. You don't have to have this, but it is handy. Just set it on the side here. 
And, you know, there seem to be a good number of bees here, but I wouldn't be surprised if this hive has already swarmed, because when I looked at this hive in April, before my eye exploded, it was absolutely exploding with bees. And it's not right now, so. Now granted, when I looked at it in April, bees weren't out foraging yet. And this is the prime time for bees to be foraging, so, you know, there's a good number of bees that are out doing that right now, but still, we'll see. When you lift a frame up, just try and lift really slow, because you don't know where the queen will be. And you don't want to roll her and squish her. Now this is an outside frame and people will say that the queen won't be on honey frames. That's simply not true. She can be anywhere and she has been anywhere that I've seen. So take a quick look for her. Again, the mission here is not necessarily to find the queen, but it never hurts. Lots of drones on this frame, which is nice. You can see the bees are just starting to gorge themselves on the honey. Okay, so another frame. Very heavy with honey. on both sides and I will tell you and I'll tell anyone that listens that I'm not very good at picking out the queen right um, I can certainly tell the difference between drones and queens but a good way to look for the queen is just look for her style of movement right she moves and more or less bees get out of her way or an entourage moves with her right size wise I mean there's never a doubt once you spot the queen that she is the queen but it's just hard for me to find her sometimes Another frame that's being filled with nectar and honey. A decent number of bees in this hive so far, not earth shattering. I mean, there are a decent amount of bees up in the honey supers as well. So, you know, very well could be that this hive swarmed, but it certainly has a decent amount of numbers to carry on as a good functioning hive here. looking at frames like this one to be a, a egg laying frame and you know I really wondered about this part of my beekeeping because my vision is just poor right and I can see big things I can see cars and such on the roads and signs but I have trouble seeing little things like eggs right? So the next couple of frames is where I'm expecting to see more signs of brood and hopefully signs that we have a right laying queen. And there's some nice brood in here. Yeah, a really nice brood frame. So, just going to look a little more closely on this frame for the queen. Got down here what could be the beginning or the end of a, of a queen cell. There's nothing in it. But I am looking for signs of, uh, of swarming, whether the hive is swarmed or is about to swarm.
Big drones, but no sign of a queen yet. Now once I get through the middle frames, and you saw that about three frames were honey, maybe even four frames were honey before the brood started to kick in. Once I go through the brood frames and back to the honey frame, then I will end the inspection. Because the purpose of the inspection was to judge the hive and see whether it's right laying, whether there's a queen in it, and all evidence is that that is the case. So this is a frame with some pollen on it, probably some eggs on it, but I can't tell because I'm uh, blind, mostly. Okay, looking for the queen on this frame. Nope. I haven't seen much so far as larva. And it would be nice to see all stages of hatchling. So it'd be nice, it'd be nice to see eggs, larva, capped, brood, because then you know the whole system is working fine, right? If you don't see eggs, you don't know when the queen laid the previous brood. I guess you can always guess within a reasonable accuracy, but it'd be nice to see all three. I just think in my, with my poor eyesight right now, it's making things much more difficult. But I don't see any uh, queen cells, bird comb on the bottom, but no queen cells. And there's a decent number of bees in this hive. Getting back out to the frames that are mostly honey covered. So that will conclude this inspection. So, you know, pretty happy with what I've seen as far as the number of bees in this hive. Happy with the fact that I've seen comb, I've seen uh, brood, and I can work back to figure out, you know, with this cat brood when when those eggs were laid, and. Uh, this hive continues to do well. It's a good number of bees. They are making babies, which is good. Good for their health. They're reaching the peak of summer here. So now I will probably give this another week, then come back either when my eyesight's good enough to see eggs or with a mentor or my wife or someone who could spot some eggs for me. And then we'll consider making a split. So, so that's it. I'm gonna button this hive back up. As far as an inspection, basic inspection, you definitely want to leave the hives, generally the frames, in the same orientation as when you, when you unpack them, right? So be careful not to switch around. That does happen, it's not the end of the world, but it just makes bees' life more complicated when you do that. So that's it, I'm gonna put this back together, and that is your basic hive inspection on 4D Honeybee.